This is my 1964 Hermes 3000. I got it last Monday at an antique store that I frequent. Um, most of the typewriters in there are really overpriced and I don't normally walk away with any, but this one was considerably less than a lot of them. There was a, a Remington number no. 5 portable from the late 30s they were asking 125 for, but this machine was considerably less. So knowing what they go for or knowing what people ask for them, which is really crazy, I, I brought it home. I said, why not? Um, pretty cool machine. It works very nicely. It's I, I will agree that while it is a very nice machine to use, it's not my favorite. A lot of people say that, that the hype of these machines is not, I shouldn't say not deserved. This machine is definitely a very capable machine, a very nice machine, but I have other favorites. But a cool machine nonetheless. Of course, you've got those mint green keys, pretty cool. The kind of off green body. Um, you know, you've got your four position color selector switch here, stencil at the top top there, middle there, and bottom there. Pretty cool. Touch control here. Odd thing on this machine is after I cleaned it, um, I cleaned it, I think, oh, I think I cleaned it Sunday. Um, I found that, un unlike most machines, most machines I leave the touch control up higher, but on this machine I find it better to type with the touch control down. Kind of interesting. Of course, you've got the paper rest here that folds to the back of the machine, of course. Of course, the margin ribbons, as you call them in the in the uh, paper bale or the yeah the paper bale, pretty cool. This side is a little sluggish. This side works pretty well, which is odd because this side it's hard to see, but the ribbon has come off of the spool in the back. I don't want to mess with it, so I just leave it alone. But it works perfectly fine. This side's sluggish, as I said, but otherwise it's fine. Um, you got your paper rest there. Uh, touch or you your paper, your line selector switch there, which also has, you push it back and that releases your ratchet for your course adjustment. So you have one, one and a half, and two, and then all the way back releases the ratchet. And then you also have a fine adjustment here. Pretty cool. Um, these are very interesting. You'd think they wouldn't be comfortable to use, but they're very interesting for the carriage release. You just push them in and they work very well. Back here, of course, is how you set your margins. You you know, you set, you move the carriage where you want it, and you lift up on, or you pull that tab toward you, and it works, and it sets the margin. First, you got the paper release here, moves the bale out of the way slightly. These, and these do really, as I've heard people say, they always feed paper right on the, right on the first try. Um, as long as the paper, as long as the carriage is in the center, it, it does it. If the carriage is over here, it'll, it won't quite make it, uh, under the bale rollers, but it works. It th that does, uh, the paper feeds right in, no problem. Pretty cool. Of course, you've got your backspacer and tabulator off of the keyboard. I thought that was kind of interesting, but it comes becomes second nature. Um, you've got your tab set, tab clear, all tab clear, and you have your margin release, but I didn't know, and I did read um, a manual that was online for one of these. This is actually, does two things. It releases your margin, but it also, if you have jammed your keys, it unjams your keys. I didn't know that um, until I read the manual, and it was, I've never heard it mentioned. I've never heard anyone say that's your unjammed key as well as your margin release. And I, I found it odd because um, normally when I come to the end of the line, I hear the bell. If I know I need a few extra spaces, I'll usually hold down the margin key, the margin release key, and try to tut and, you know, finish off what I'm writing and then return the carriage. But... I couldn't do that with this machine. I was confused, but pretty cool idea. Of course, you've got your basket shift or segment shift. Shift lock over there. Pretty cool machine. A lot of interesting features. The carriage return lever is a really nice feature. You, It brings the carriage right over, no problem. Very smooth action. I can see why these are so popular. But at the same time, I've got other machines that are that don't have as many features that I like to use a lot better, namely my Remington 2 Portable and even my Corona Standard. It's, it, but a very capable machine, a very nice machine to type on. The one disadvantage this machine has is, strangely, if you don't type right on it, 
you know, if you don't use the right technique, the print quality is a little is so so. It's okay, but it's not brilliant. But here we'll show you we'll show you it in action. And right in, no problem. I know that's something that everyone loves about these machines that you could just feed the paper and you never have to touch the veil. Pretty cool feature. There you go. Types pretty well. If you type too fast, it it, it tends to it, it tends to leave the the top a little the top of the letters a little faint. It could be an adjustment on the basket, but I don't want to get too involved in adjusting things on this because I I just you know it's it's out of my realm of expertise. But I don't claim to be an expert. But I'm more used to American machines and tinkering with those. But overall, not a bad machine. 1964 Hermes 3000.